Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. I pray that you are well and that uh, today that you will meet with the living God who is here in our presence, no matter where we are. May you be filled uh, to the brim with the knowledge of him and of his praise. Just a few notices as we meet together. Just to say, if you're watching this in Coo Martin, um, if you'd like to watch this video twice, you can do, but um, there's also the ability to watching to watch this video live um, this afternoon at four o'clock. Just turn up uh, with your mask um, at Church of Four and you can watch that there. Um, if you want to watch it twice, keep coming. And if not, give it a pause now and uh, you can watch it later with others there. There's also a communion service at Pip and Jim's. Again, that's at four o'clock. You'll need to make sure you book in your ticket for that, your free ticket. That just enables us to uh, keep everyone as safe as possible. Um, if you have problem doing that, uh, please do be in contact and we'll be able to help you. You can find all the details for that on our website, coomtocoomchurches.co.uk. APCMs, uh, we're still going with those. Uh, Pip and Jim's and Coo Martin are done and the minutes will be out as soon as physically possible. Um, and Berry Narba is coming up very shortly. That's on the 19th of October at 1.45 p.m. Uh, so if you're able to make that and you're in Berry Narba, we'd love to see you there. Again, that's online. Um, and if you contact me for the details, I'll send those to you. Um, you'll see the links for that online as well. If um, you want the uh, reports and such like for Berry Narva, please do be in contact with me um, and we'll make sure we get you a copy of those. Well then, let us continue now um, as we go to confession together. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sin and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Amen. And here's our collect for today. God, our judge and saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love, that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so with the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. We're going to worship in song together now. If you're watching this on our Benefits website, you'll see the video embedded below this one. If you're watching live at St. Peter at Vincula in Coo Martin, uh, their music will be provided for you. Please pause the video now. Our reading today comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Euodia, and I plead with Syntyche, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, Help these women, since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. 
rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we continue worshipping together in the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Hello everyone. Thank you for this privilege of talking to you again today. I pray that you are well and keeping safe. My grandchildren, Sebastian and Olivia, are into silly jokes at the moment. We bought this book for them the other day. Let's try some of them out on you. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm not very good at telling jokes. So here we go. Waiter, waiter, will my sandwich be long? No, madam, just the usual square shape. If you happen to see a vicar covered in spaghetti, don't worry, it's just the local pasta. I recently started a business making and selling statues of religious figures. I've yet to make a profit. What did the envelope say to the stamp? Stick with me and we'll go places. What did the window say to the door? What are you squeaking about? I'm the one with the pain. I hope these made you smile a little or perhaps groan. Jokes to help, do help to bring a smile to our faces and joy into our lives. How are you all coping with these worrying times? Are you feeling full of joy? I expect not. With more people being infected and dying from this wretched disease. Having to endure tougher restrictions and most of all not knowing when it will all end. If the pandemic has affected you or your family in any way my heart goes out to you and may God's peace be with you. Frederick Meyer, a 19th century Baptist preacher, observed, peace is joy resting, joy is peace dancing. Paul talks a lot about joy and peace in his letter to the Philippians, where our Bible reading came from today. Not 
the joy and peace that comes from human happiness and a lack of conflict, but the gifts of the Spirit that come from knowing Jesus as Lord and Saviour. The Hebrew word shalom for peace means well-being, completeness, wholeness, being at one with self, with neighbour and the world. Paul has a particular affection for the church at Philippi. It was the first church Paul founded in Eastern Europe, then Macedonia. Philippi was a Roman colony and followers of Jesus there faced opposition and persecution because of their faith. Paul may have recalled when he preached the gospel there and when Paul and Silas ended up in prison. Remember the passage from Acts 16. Instead of complaining, Paul continued praising God, praying and singing hymns. Incredibly, this resulted in the jailer and his household believing, which helped to build up the church in Philippi. We read in Acts 16, the jailer was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God he and his household. Paul wrote this letter from prison and was grateful to the Philippian church for the gifts they had sent. This may have been also the last opportunity for Paul to write to them. The church there was suffering for Jesus in the same way that Paul was, yet the joy and peace that came from knowing Jesus was uppermost in Paul's mind. This letter revolves around what has come to be known as the Messianic hymn or poem in chapter 2, where Paul uses extracts from Isaiah to, to express his conviction of who Jesus is. And his letter explains how the followers of Jesus are to be living expressions of Jesus. Let's look at today's passage more closely, which comes from the last chapter of Philippians. We read, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Odia and I plead with Sintishi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. So facing a future in which persecution will threaten the church of Philippi, fear and anxiety will be natural reactions. But Paul encourages his crown and joy, as he calls them, to rejoice, for their names are written in the book of life. In other words, they are saved through Jesus. Aware of a disagreement between two church members, Eudia and Sintichi, Paul pleads with them to concentrate not on what divides them, but on what unites them, their love for Jesus. Paul asks his co-workers in the church to help resolve this dispute. Paul continues in the passage, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heights and and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Paul encourages the Philippians and encourages us not to be anxious, but to focus our minds on what is good, to bring our concerns into God's presence. And the God of peace will enfold us. How does this passage help us in our lives as followers of Jesus today? The peace that Paul speaks about, the peace that comes from God, is central to this passage. Being at peace with one another and standing firm and united in our faith. Knowing peace in everyday challenges and in the specific challenges of our Christian faith. Seeking peace by focusing on what is true, good and lovely, rather than focusing on the challenges and oppositions which we can entrust to God. There is much fear and anxiety about the future today. So the challenge then for us as followers of Jesus today is to bring the message of joy and peace to anyone who is feeling anxious, troubled or facing uncertainty. We are encouraged not to worry, to offer our concerns to God, to rejoice in all that God has given us and not to forget that God is always with us whatever we are experiencing. Let us look for the good in everyone and everything. As Paul tells us, look for what is true, for what is honourable, for what is pleasing, for what is excellent. Look for everything worthy of praise. God calls us to be messengers of joy and peace. A joy and peace that comes only from knowing the love of Jesus in our lives. As Paul says in his letter to the Romans, may God, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you to Dave. Now let us continue in our worship as we praise God with the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers this week are provided by Elaine at St Peter's in Berinaba. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, source of every blessing, giver of every good gift, we are gathered here together this morning to worship and adore you and to bless your holy name. We praise you for the revelation of yourself in our Lord Jesus Christ 
and every glimpse we have of your nature. May our love and worship of you so fill our lives that we show you forth to others. We praise you for all the joys of life and the everyday blessings which we receive from you. May we, in turn, be a source of blessing to all with whom we come into contact in the days ahead. We ask this in the name of Jesus. And loving Father, we give thanks and praise for all that you have done for us here and are doing day by day. We hold before you those areas throughout the world where there is suffering in any way. Especially remembering the spreading world worldwide of the coronavirus. We ask that you would guide the medical professions to do what is best for all and to assure all who are able to receive the test and trace option so that every day life may return to some sort of normality. Thinking too of the many animals, birds and insects, so much of your creation having been without shelter or water. We think of areas of unrest and countries at war, people living in fear and horror at what is happening around them. O oh Lord, bring your peace to reign, forgiveness with one another, provision of homes and hospitals, jobs and most of all, the security we know of having you as our Lord and Saviour. And we ask all this in his name. Father of all, every time we come into your presence, we are amazed by your grace and understanding. We are overwhelmed by your care and concern. We are moved by the joy you have in us, and we long to worship you in the way that is worthy of you. We praise you, Lord, for the way that Christ made himself as if he were nothing. He who was divine from the beginning emptied himself of the position that was his by right. We thank you that he gave his life for each and every one of us so that we may be free to become people you always intended us to be. May your Holy Spirit so flood our hearts and lives that we may glorify Christ as our Saviour too and give honour to him as our Lord. We ask this in the name of him who gave his life for each and every one of us. Lord, in a world where many are lonely, we thank you for our family and friends. In a world where many are in doubt or ignorance, thank you for our faith. In a world where many are homeless, we thank you for the warmth and security of our homes. In a world where many are sick, we thank you for our health. In a world where many are afraid, oppressed or at war, we thank you for our peace. In a world where many are hungry, we thank you for our food. Help us always to be aware of the need of other people and to share the good things we enjoy. Father, change us where we need to be changed. Guide us into a deeper understanding of yourself. Encourage us in the knowledge that you always walk beside us. And may we never fail to seek your will and way in our daily lives, which we lay before you afresh today. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we give thanks to God now for his generosity to us and through us. You may want to hold an item that represents your giving to your local church and to other organisations nearby. And so we say together, Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. And gathering our prayers and praises into one. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, as we end our service together, hear the teachings of Jesus. Blessed are those who hear the words of God and obey it. So go and do God's will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you today and all your days. Amen. <laughs>